A few weeks ago, I lost my dad after he struggled with his health for a long time. My name is Kelly, and sometimes I find myself wishing I could have introduced him to his grandchildren. This thought always brings a heavy sigh. Five years ago, when I was 37, I got married. On that happy day, my dad and I made a special promise I would be the first to tell him if I was expecting. Sadly, that's a promise I will never be able to keep, and it's the biggest regret I have about my dad. His illness was discovered a year ago, and since then, I did everything I could to be there for him. I visited our childhood home more often, spent many hours at the hospital with my mom, and made sure to call or video chat even more. Despite all of this, I sometimes wonder if it was enough. I often think to myself, could I have done more? Lost in thought, I whispered these words, and my mom, always supportive, comforted me, saying, Kelly, you did everything you could. Your dad knew that, and he was proud. Just then, my sister Julia walked in with a man who looked to be about 45, probably the lawyer. This is Scott, the attorney, she introduced him, and my mom quickly offered him a seat. As soon as we all sat down, Julia couldn't hold back and mentioned that the lawyer said dad left us a significant inheritance. I couldn't help but respond, Julia, you know it's not all yours. That comment instantly changed the mood. My sister and I have always had a rocky relationship, made worse by our dad's illness. Her refusal to visit our dad, even though I tried to bring them closer, didn't help. Her attitude has always been a problem, and it became even more noticeable during these difficult times. Looking back, my words to her might have been too harsh, driven by my worry for our father. However, her response didn't make things better. You're an adult. There's no need to be so stubborn, I pointed out, to which she snapped back, I'm not being stubborn. Living in the city and traveling to the countryside isn't as simple as you think it's just a five-hour drive. I responded, but she argued back, saying that those five hours aren't just about time it costs money, and yes, money is important to her. She told me she's busy and asked me to stop bothering her. That ended our conversation. Despite the distance, I always thought she could make an effort to visit now and then. This belief was a big reason why our relationship started to fall apart. In the end, she never visited our father, and the distance between us only grew. The tension in the room increased until the lawyer stepped in and suggested we all take a moment to calm down. I apologized, saying, I'm sorry, which seemed to make things a bit better. The lawyer then explained, as I mentioned over the phone, I'm here about your father's will. My mother, looking confused, asked quietly, when was this arranged? The lawyer replied, a few weeks before he passed, your father reached out to me. He asked you to come to the hospital, my mother asked. The lawyer answered, yes, I drafted the will there with him, and his primary doctor was there too. It was arranged that the doctor would notify me after your father passed which is why I contacted you now. The lawyer then took out a white envelope and placed it in front of us. Recognizing my father's handwriting on the envelope, I whispered, that's definitely dad's handwriting. Julia, visibly impatient, demanded, just get on with it. What does it say? You know I'm busy. The lawyer, with a slight smile, opened the envelope. Inside, there was a single piece of paper outlining the inheritance, the house, some land, some savings, and a storage shed. We knew about the house and the land, but the mention of a storage shed was new to me. My sister, frustrated, turned to the lawyer and asked, Wait, what about the farm? The lawyer echoed, a bit surprised, Yes, the farm. I explained, our father used to work on it as a hobby. He had run a successful business in a nearby town, but decided to slow down after turning 55, thinking about closing the company to spend more time on his hobbies, including the farm. This new mention of the farm added another layer to our father's legacy and what he left behind during my high school years. I remember saying that I wanted to take life a bit slower. My sister, who was in college at the time, didn't agree with this more relaxed approach. But both my mom and I, 
worried about my dad's health, supported the idea. Don't worry about money, Julia, we've got plenty of savings, my dad reassured her. Though hesitant, she eventually agreed. After that conversation, my dad did wind down his business and started farming close to our home. There's something fulfilling about working with the land, he would say, his face lighting up with joy. Seeing how happy he was made me feel that we made the right choice, though Julia seemed less convinced. Despite promising to come back home after graduation, Julia chose to build her career near her university and eventually married the CEO of an IT firm she met through her job. That's how things were when my father took up farming until his health started to decline. Julia insisted that the farm be included in the inheritance. At her insistence, the lawyer checked the documents and found that the farm was actually leased land. I had mistakenly thought we owned a large piece of land. Julia seemed disappointed by this discovery, but knowing little about farming ourselves, I felt it might be for the best. The discussion then turned to how the inheritance would be divided. The house and the surrounding land will go to the wife, the lawyer said. Julia smirked, probably thinking about how the remaining assets would be split. The rest, including the savings and the storage shed, should be divided between you three, the lawyer suggested. Savings? That means cash, right? I'll take that, Julia said, focusing on the money. The total savings amount to approximately $300,000, and this sum is not subject to inheritance tax, the lawyer informed us. I want the $300,000 in cash, Julia declared, feeling like she had won, but this didn't sit well with me, and I spoke up. Hold on, I don't agree. Why should you get all the cash? I protested. Because I'm the eldest, she argued, as if that settled it. Fine, you can have the storage shed. What's that even worth anyway? She added dismissively, turning back to the lawyer for more details. It's the shed next to the farm. Whoever inherits it will own the structure, the land it's on, and anything inside it, the lawyer explained. Suddenly, Julia's attitude changed when she heard there was additional land. It struck me as odd that, even though she was married to a successful CEO, her desire for more seemed never-ending. As the lawyer explained more about the storage shed, he mentioned it came with a small piece of land, about 90 square feet, roughly the size of a small bedroom. He then laid out some photos of the shed for us to see, showing both the outside and inside. The shed looked quite run down from the outside, and inside it only had simple gardening tools like hoses, scissors, and shovels, nothing that seemed particularly valuable. My sister made a face of disgust when she saw the photos. I don't want this, she said, looking closely at the images. They really just showed everyday items, more valuable for their memories than for money. Fine, you take the cash. I want nothing to do with that old shed, she said, clearly wanting to distance herself from what she saw as a worthless inheritance. Hold on, that seems unfair, I protested, realizing how uneven the division was. My sister quickly agreed to take the cash, knowing it was the more valuable option, leaving me with what she saw as worthless. Her insistence made me feel trapped, especially when my mother said, as long as Julia doesn't complain later, I see no problem with this arrangement. Complain? Why would I? Julia quickly agreed, satisfied with getting the cash, leaving me with the shed. I couldn't hide my disappointment, but before I could argue more, Julia dismissed my concerns, accusing me of being too sentimental. You care more about our father than money, right? She challenged, leaving me momentarily speechless. It's true that family should be valued over money, but her quick decision left me feeling unsettled. In the end, my mother inherited the house and land, Julia happily took all of Dad's savings, and I was left with the neglected shed. After agreeing to the division, Julia even signed a document promising not to dispute how the inheritance was split, laughing confidently as she did so. I couldn't contain my frustration and later expressed my disappointment to my mother. Why didn't you support me? I asked, feeling let down. 
My mother insisted she had helped, claiming that her involvement made sure I got the shed. But I'm not happy with just the shed, I argued, unable to see its value. You might find something unexpectedly wonderful if you give it a chance, my mom suggested, trying to be optimistic. Despite my frustrations, her words sparked a faint glimmer of hope. Maybe there was more to the shed than it seemed, a thought that left me wondering. I tried to make sense of the day's events. After getting the key from the lawyer, I walked to the shed, which was beside a field about 15 minutes away from our house. The path was quiet and rarely used, adding to the peaceful yet somber atmosphere. The field, which my father had leased until he recently went into the hospital, was now empty, giving the place an untouched and solemn feeling. When I unlocked the shed, I was greeted by a thick layer of dust, showing how long it had been neglected. Wow, it's really dusty, I said, noticing the heavy scent of disuse in the air. Even though I felt a bit disappointed at first, I still hoped to find something special of my father's, maybe a keepsake hidden inside. As I looked around the shed, it quickly became clear that it was just a simple space filled with farming tools. These items might have held sentimental value, but they didn't seem particularly special at first glance. I thought to myself, maybe I should just take what's inside for now, as I scanned the dim and cluttered surroundings. Then, I noticed something odd about the shed size. It seemed smaller on the inside than it did from the outside, which puzzled me. Was it a trick of the light, or was my mind playing tricks on me? I stepped outside to get a better look, still curious about the strange difference. Driven by curiosity, I decided to explore the outside of the shed. As I walked around to the back, hidden among a dense group of trees, I found a second door. Wait, another entrance? I gasped. From inside the shed, there had been no sign of this door. It looked like there was only one way in and out. This discovery hinted at a hidden space, only accessible from this secret back door. A surge of excitement rushed through me. Could this be one of Dad's secrets? He loved surprising us, always finding joy in the unexpected, like the surprises he planned for my birthdays. The memories brought tears to my eyes as I re-entered the shed, determined to find the key to this hidden door. After a thorough search, I was ready to discover what lay beyond it. I found four keys cleverly hidden inside the handle of a shovel. Excited, I rushed to the back door and tried one of the keys. With a satisfying click, the door swung open. Inside this small, hidden space stood a large safe, alone and imposing. Is this from Dad's company? I wondered aloud, as a flood of questions filled my mind. What secrets did it hold? Was this my father's way of leaving a final piece of himself behind? The discovery hinted at parts of my father's life that I had yet to uncover, like a personal treasure hunt he had left for me to explore. I immediately recognized the safe as the one that used to sit in the corner of my father's office, a familiar sight from my childhood. Seeing it brought a wave of nostalgia over me. This safe was a real connection to my father, making the inheritance feel even more meaningful. Knowing my dad, this felt like just the beginning of his final surprises for me. There's got to be more, I whispered to myself as I used the third key to unlock the safe. The door creaked open, revealing contents that left me completely amazed and unexpected legacy. Realizing how important this discovery was, I quickly secured the safe and went to tell my mother. Later, with my husband's help, we moved the safe from my parents' home. It occurred to me that these valuable items, likely part of my inheritance, might have tax implications. Wanting to handle this properly, I decided to seek legal advice. Following the lawyer's suggestion, I contacted a certified public accountant, CPA, recommended by a friend to help navigate the possible tax issues. This professional took care of the complicated details, making sure everything was in order. A year passed as we dealt with these matters when, unexpectedly, my sister showed up at my home. Her visit was surprising, especially considering our strained relationship over the inheritance. 
I was just in the area, she claimed, but her uneasy behavior and the fact that we lived 20 minutes apart made her visit seem less than casual. Despite our complicated history, I invited her in. After serving coffee, she seemed restless and finally asked, Did you win the lottery or something? Her question puzzled me. I never played the lottery, and it wasn't the time for my husband's holiday bonus. What are you getting at? I asked, trying to understand her point. I finally asked her to clarify her strange accusations. Her mood shifted suddenly to irritation. Are you making fun of me? She accused. Her reaction confused me even more, as her question seemed completely unexpected. I had no idea what made her think I had come into a lot of money, especially since only my family knew about the mysterious contents of the safe. My sister was filled with curiosity about money, insisting that I must have received a significant amount. She told me about a recent conversation with our aunt in the city, who unknowingly sparked her curiosity. Our aunt mentioned receiving a $5,000 gift card from me as a thank you for visiting our father during his illness. This gesture led my sister to wildly speculate that I had stumbled upon some unexpected fortune. You've come into some money, haven't you? Just admit it, she pressed, looking for answers. Understanding what had led to her questions, I sighed, which only irritated her more. What's with the attitude? Are you making fun of me? She demanded. I tried to explain that it was just a gesture of appreciation, but she questioned where the money for such gifts came from. I reminded her of the inheritance, specifically the dusty shed she had dismissed and then revealed the discovery of the safe inside it a real treasure trove left by our father. The safe contained a collection of valuable watches, a passion of our father's. Although I wasn't sure of their exact worth, it was clear they were valuable, especially considering the modest savings left behind. This revelation led to a discussion about the possibility of having to pay inheritance tax a concern my mother had raised when she learned what was inside the safe. What should I do, Mom? I asked, seeking her advice. My mother suggested handling everything openly and honestly, reminding me that secrets like these usually come to light eventually. Following her advice, I contacted the lawyer we had previously consulted. The lawyer explained that the value of inherited items determines whether inheritance tax applies. This led me to take the responsible step of accurately declaring the inheritance and ensuring I was complying with all the legal and financial requirements of my newfound wealth by seeking professional advice. I found out that a certified public accountant, CPA, could help manage the valuation and tax obligations of the inherited watches for me. Trusting the CPA with this task, we discovered that the collection was worth an incredible half a million dollars. Because of their high value, it was clear that inheritance tax needed to be paid. The sensible advice was to keep only the watches that held sentimental value to me and sell the others to someone who could appreciate and afford them. This approach not only made financial sense, but also felt right emotionally. From the money made from the sale, I was able to cover the inheritance tax and also send gift cards to relatives who supported us during my father's illness. This is what had sparked my sister's curiosity. Among the keepsakes, I chose to keep my father's pocket watch. It wasn't worth much in terms of money, but it was rich in memories. I shared this story with my sister, showing her the pocket watch and trying to explain its sentimental value. However, her reaction was lukewarm. She seemed more interested in what was sold than what was kept. When she asked about the remaining watches and the safe, I told her it was our mother's house and explained its size and importance to our father's business. Her response was thoughtful, which left me feeling uneasy about her intentions. However, she left without asking any more questions, much to my relief, though I couldn't shake off an unsettling sense of worry. My fears were somewhat confirmed that very night when I received a distressing call from my mother, urging my husband and me to come to her house quickly. As we approached, the scene was alarming red lights flashing in the darkness, 
police cars stationed outside. Pushing through the gathering crowd, I found my mother and learned what had happened. She had been getting ready for bed when she heard strange noises that startled her. It sounded like someone was frantically searching through the house. With no one else home to help, my mother made a quick decision to escape through a window, driven by fear and desperation. Her description of the situation was unnerving, painting a picture of a night filled with panic and uncertainty. Under the cover of darkness, my mother had noticed the eerie glow of a flashlight moving inside the house, confirming her fears of a burglary. In a state of panic, she made her escape. She sought help from our neighbor, who, after seeing the suspicious activity, quickly called the police, convinced that a burglar was in the house. But the supposed intruder was actually my sister, Julia, who had decided to search the safe after hearing about my inheritance earlier that day. Without knowing her intentions, both my mother and the neighbor were understandably alarmed. When the police arrived, the situation escalated. Julia, caught off guard and feeling guilty, tried to flee the scene in a panic. Ironically, as she attempted to escape, she collided with the safe, causing it to tip over and trap her underneath. This accident led to her being rushed to the hospital with complaints of leg pain, leaving us all in disbelief over her reckless actions. After this chaos, my mother and I found ourselves apologizing to the responding officers for the misunderstanding. I also felt the need to inform Julia's husband about the incident, only to learn from him that Julia had been hiding a significant amount of debt due to her extravagant spending on luxury items. Their recent argument had ended with her storming out, determined to borrow money from our mom to settle her financial troubles. What we didn't know was that she had already used up her inheritance in an attempt to pay off her debt. Julia's husband, already stressed from discovering her financial mismanagement, declared his intention to divorce her after hearing about her latest escapade. This revelation explained Julia's desperate actions that night, which led to a tense scene at the hospital where her husband brought up the subject of divorce. The entire ordeal turned into a dramatic clash, highlighting the serious consequences of Julia's actions and the turmoil they caused in our family. Julia was adamant, insisting, I'm not getting a divorce, absolutely not. But the reality of her situation became clear when her husband presented the divorce papers. Faced with undeniable evidence of their broken relationship, she had no choice but to sign them. Now confined to her hospital bed, with a mix of shock and resignation, she was flipping through a part-time job magazine, clearly thinking about how to tackle her debt with new employment. While this turn of events was unfortunate, it offered a small glimmer of hope that she might finally take responsibility for her actions after everything that had happened. I made an important decision to move back to my childhood home. The chaos had definitely made me worried about my mother's well-being, but there was also a happier reason behind my choice I found out I'm expecting. After a lot of discussion, my husband and I agreed that moving back would be the best decision. This way, we can have my mother's support as our family grows. Even though I regret that my father couldn't be part of this joyful news, I find comfort in believing he would have shared in our happiness. As I step into this new chapter, the excitement of welcoming a healthy child fills me with peace and hope for the future, despite the recent family troubles.